the government introduction a government is a body that governs a state or a country it is an important and essential element of a country it makes laws and has the power to enforce these laws according to j w garner government may be defined as the agency or machinery through which common policies are determined in ordinary words we can say that government is the administrative organ of the country or a state the government can change but not the state the government is one of the most important elements of a country which represents the will of the country and runs the administration of the country the organization of the government is different in different countries need for government without government the country or state would be like a disorganized mass with no means of collective action the government is needed to maintain law and order in the country it protects the country from intruders and looks after the welfare of the citizens it performs many functions and takes a number of decisions to achieve government objectives no single individual can take the right decisions so we select people who understand people's needs and are mature by way of age the legislature the legislature passes laws the executive the laws are put into effect by the executive the judiciary it makes sure that laws are enforced properly all the organs of the government should try to establish a society or proper order where all round development of all the individuals is possible major functions of a government are protection of life and property defense from foreign aggression maintaining law and order establishing diplomatic relations with other countries administration of justice spread of education the government of india india has a parliamentary system of government based largely on the united kingdom westminster system the government comprises three branches the executive the legislative and the judiciary the executive branch it is headed by the president he or she is the head of the state and exercises his or her powers on the advice of the council of ministers directly or through the official working in various offices of the government the legislative branch or the parliament this branch consists of the lower house the directly elected 545 members of the lok sabha and the upper house the 250 member indirectly elected members of the rajya sabha as well as the president the parliament enjoys parliamentary supremacy all the members of the council of ministers as well as the prime minister are the members of the parliament if they are not they must be elected within a period of 6 months from the time they assume their respective office the prime minister and the council of ministers are responsible to the lok sabha individually as well as collectively the judiciary this branch has the supreme court at its apex 21 high courts and numerous civil criminal and family courts at the district level the basic civil and criminal laws governing the citizens of india are set down in major parliamentary legislations such as the civil procedure code the indian penal code the criminal procedure code India accepts the International Court of Justice jurisdiction with several reservations. By the 73rd and 74th amendments to the constitution, the Panchayat Raj system has been institutionalized for local governance. Types of government. There are various types of government, but democracy, monarchy and dictatorship are the most common forms of the government. Democracy. In democratic government, people have the right to participate in the governing process and in making important decisions for the welfare of the society according to abraham lincoln democracy is the government of the people by the people and for the people monarchy monarchy existed in several countries in ancient and medieval times this type of government is governed by a single person he is called a king or queen or monarch The king is supreme and has all the powers. He may have a group of advisers to advise him on important matters. In monarchy, people have no right in the decision-making process.
In ancient days, it was believed that the kings had been chosen by God and people could not challenge their authority. Dictatorship A dictatorship is a government where people have no right to participate in ruling the nation. The whole power is vested in the hands of a single person. The powers of the dictator cannot be checked. In dictatorship, the people cannot elect or change their government. Hitler in Germany, Mussolini in Italy and Stalin in Russia are examples of dictators in the world. India, the democratic form of government. In India, the preamble of the constitution lays down the type of government that we have adopted. Sovereign, secular, socialist and democratic republic. Sovereign. The word sovereign means supreme or independent nation. India is internally and externally sovereign, externally free from control of any foreign power and internally it has a free government which is directly elected by the people and makes laws that govern the people. Socialist The word socialist was added to the preamble by the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976. It implies social and economic equality for all its citizens. Secular The word secular was also inserted into the preamble by the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976. It implies equality of all religions and religious tolerance. India does not have any official state religion. It treats all religions with equal respect. Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar said, Secularism does not mean that we shall not take into consideration the religious sentiments of people. All that what a secular state means is that parliament shall not be competent to impose any particular religion on the rest of the people. Democratic The government of India is elected democratically. Eligible voters may vote at the polling station in his or her constituency at which he or she is registered on presentation of the voter's identity card or other suitable identification. Use of electronic voting machines has simplified the process of voting and counting. 84 out of 545 seats in the Lok Sabha are reserved for various social groups and tribes, while the large majority are open and unrestricted. In local elections, 33% seats are reserved for women. There is also a proposal to give out 33% seats in all elections to women candidates. The Election Commission of India is responsible for ensuring free and fair elections in every part of the country. Republic In our country, supreme power is held by the people and their elected representatives. The President of India is the elected head of the Republic by an electoral college indirectly for a term of five years. Levels of the government. The government in a country works at three different levels. Local government. The government which works in a village or town is called a local level government. State level. The government which works at the state level is called the state government. Central level. The government which works at the national level and works for the welfare of the whole country is called the central government. Functions of the government. Three functions are performed by the government. The legislative functions, the executive functions, the judicial functions. The legislative functions. Its main function is to make new laws and amend old ones. It exercises control over the executive. The Council of Ministers is answerable to the Parliament. Parliament can amend the constitution according to the procedure. It controls the government's finances. The budget is presented before the Parliament by the Finance Minister. Parliament can reject or pass any proposed tax. The executive functions. It enforces the laws and rules. It punishes those who break the laws. A bill becomes law only when the President gives his assent to it. The Parliament can issue ordinances and dissolve the Parliament. The executive looks after the defence of the country and maintains the integrity of the country. It prepares the budget and gets it passed by the legislature. It has the right to collect taxes and to spend the money. It appoints judges in consultation with the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. The judicial functions. It examines whether laws are being obeyed or not. 
it punishes those who break the laws it has the sole power of interpreting the constitution its important function is to settle the disputes among the citizens and between the citizens and the government it protects the fundamental rights of the citizens these rights are granted to the citizens by the constitution against other individuals or the state president can seek its advice regarding the legal position of any matter right to vote universal adult franchise when all adult citizens have a right to vote or franchise it is called universal adult franchise right to vote is the most important requirement for a successful democracy in india a citizen of 18 years and above has right to vote in elections he can choose any candidate of his choice standing for the central state or local governments thus adult franchise allows all adults to participate in the decision making process the participation of the adults is direct as well as indirect universal adult franchise in india you must have come across a phrase which refers to india as the largest democracy in the world democracy is one of the basic principles on which the constitution of india is based Indian democracy is the largest democracy in the world because India has the largest number of voters in the world who elect the government. It is not only the central or the union government but also the governments at the state and the local levels which are elected by the people. A citizen of India who is 18 years of age or above and who is not otherwise disqualified is entitled to vote in the elections. Need for universal adult franchise Universal adult franchise ensures political equality. It is in harmony with the principle of sovereignty of the people. The right to vote stimulates interest in public affairs. The right to vote increases the self-respect of the voters. The right to vote provides an opportunity to the minorities to safeguard their rights. Key elements that influence the working of a democracy. Participation Participation is an important element of the working of a democratic government. In a democracy, every citizen should be free to participate in election as a candidate for any post. If he gets a majority, then there should be no hitch in his way to occupy any post, maybe of a minister or even a prime minister. Sovereignty. Sovereignty rests with the people who are also the source of all power in a democracy. The government gets all its power from the people and is answerable to them for the use of these powers. In brief, the ultimate source of power is the people. Fraternity. A democratic government is based on mutual goodwill and fraternity. The purpose of giving equal rights to every individual is to promote fraternity among them all. It promotes mutual love which ultimately strengthens the nation. Liberty. It is also an essential characteristic of democracy. In a democratic setup, everybody is free to express his or her opinion, form associations, have faith in any religion and profess the same, criticize the government, etc. Liberty leads to overall development of the citizens. Majority. The present-day democracy is also known as the rule of majority. In general elections, whichever party gets majority forms the government but while running administration the majority cannot ignore the interests of the minority equality equality is one of the pillars of democracy in a democracy everybody has equal status and no discrimination is made on the basis of caste religion color race sex etc everyone gets equal economic political and civil rights rule of law In a democracy the administration is not run according to the wishes of any particular individual or a group of individuals rather it is run according to fixed laws which are supreme and the individual is punished for the violation of law constitution the government derives its powers and functions from a common source that is the constitution the constitution is a written document and is the form of contract where the units that decide to come together put forth the terms on which such a union is acceptable to them the constitution contains the details of governmental reforms their respective powers 
as well as limits on those powers all the institutions of government work within the provisions of the constitution